news analysis for uh, data september 8 2023 displayed here as a list of news article that will be going through today uh, let us start let us look at the first article um, start the discussion recently central government has sought public comments on draft guidelines for prevention and regulation of dark patterns on the internet mainly in the e-commerce platform the draft guidelines uh, were drafted guidelines are uploaded on the website of union consumer affairs ministry the public com- can comment uh, on the guidelines till october 5 this is about the news article in this discussion we will see some points about dark patterns uh, a dark pattern refers to a user interface technique uh, that is designed to manipulate the internet users to take specific actions uh, that they are not interested to do it it's a little bit confusing right i am i will explain it to you with an example i hope many of you people have ordered things through flipkart sometimes when you are scrolling through the products in flipkart you might have noticed below the product that only one product is left at the time you will uh, do uh, you probably end up ordering the product right see the pop up that appearing as uh, only one product is left is termed as dark pattern in this particular example uh, flipkart has uh, manipulated you into buying the product using this fake pop up this is what is known as dark pattern okay i hope you understand about dark pattern see there are many types of dark patterns some of the common one includes basket sneaking uh, con- confirm shaming forced uh, action and subscription traps now uh, we will uh, understand about the one by one first let us take the basket sneaking see basket sneaking is dark pattern that places an additional or unwanted object in the shopping cart so if the users does not consciously remove the product the item will be ordered unintentionally this type of dark pattern is most common in e-commerce and food delivery platforms okay the second one is confirm shaming it is a dark pattern that uses a phrase video audio or even other means to create a sense of fear or shame or guilt in the minds of the users uh, it also offers a solution to overcome such a bad feeling for example let us take the ad of for hair growth oil that frequently appears in youtube the ad appears in a way that uh, a bald person faces many shames among the pe- public to overcome that problem such a per- person purchases some hair oil and he successfully regenerated his hair so many bald persons who is watching such a video you will probably end up buying the hair oil hair growth oil that is what is called confirm shaming shaming the third type is forced action it is a type of dark pattern that forces the users to buy the additional goods or uh, so, uh, subscribes um, or sign ups for any unrelated services for example let us take the pop up of offers in flipkart see we might have bro, um, um flipkart for bros for uh, flipkart for buying some clothes at the time there might be a pop up mentioning that there is 60% discount on healthcare products so it may it may change our mind we might end up ordering both the clothes and the hair healthcare products this is uh, example for forced action and finally there is subscription trap it is a type of dark pattern that makes a process of cancellation of a paid subscription a more complex and the lengthy process so it is a kind of trap that end up in continuing subscription even if you are not interested see uh, these are some ca- common dark patterns uh, we uh, we saw in the news article the draft guidelines for prevention and regulation of these uh, dark patterns were uploaded on the website of the union consumer affairs ministry see these guidelines aims to prevent and regulate the dark patterns and that we have seen now the government said that guidelines would made applicable to all persons and online platforms including sellers and advertisers now the central government has sought the public comments on 
ड्राफ्ट गाइडलाइन सो वी विल हैव टू वेट एंड सी वॉट विल हैपन इन फ्यूचर दट्स ऑल रिकॉर्डिंग दिस डिस्कशन इन दिस डिस्कशन वी सा वॉट इज डार्क पैटर्न वेर इज एक्सापल्स ऑफ डार्क पैटर्न इन ई कामर्स इंडस्ट्री एंड नाउ विद दिस लेट एस कंक्लूड दिस डिस्कशन एंड टेक अप द नेक्स्ट न्यूज आर्टिकल हैव अ लुक एट दिस न्यूज आर्टिकल दिस इज रिगार्डिंग रेस ऑफ कास्ट राइस ऑफ कास्ट ऑफ मील्स इन इंडिया द आर्टिकल टॉक्स अबाउट अ रिपोर्ट ऑन फुड प्लेट एक्सपेंसिस विच इज इश्यूड बै क्रिस्टल मार्केट इंटेलिजेंस एंड एनालिटिक्स अकॉर्डिंग टू दि रिपोर्ट द प्रईस आफ वेजिटेरियन थाली इनक्रीस्ड बै ट्वेंटी फोर पर्सेंट कंपेर्ड टू द प्रीवियस् इयर अंड द कास्ट आफ नॉन वेजिटेरियन थाली इनक्रीस्ड बै थर्टीन दिस ह्यूज इनक्रीस इन कास्ट आफ वेजिटेरियन फुट इस ड्यू टू इनक्रीस इन टोमेटो प्रईस इन अवर डिस्कशन टूडे वी विल लर्न अबउट द कॉन्सेप्ट आफ तालिनोमिक्स एंड द इंपार्टेंस इन डिटर्मिंग द फुट प्रईस फर्स्टली वाट इस तालिनोमिक्स The Economic Survey 2020 first coined the term thalinomics. The government called it as an economy for the common man in simple words. Thali thal economy means economics of a plate of food in India. It is the attempt to determine the cost of own complete homemade meal. Uh, that is a healthy indian thali usually two types of thalis are considered for the analysis uh, it is vegetarian thali and non vegetarian thali the quantities for cereal and uh, cereal vegetable pulses and non vegetarian items are taken for each thali assuming that at least two full meals should be consumed in a day based on the thali prices were calculated and the thali prices includes the cost of cereals vegetables proteins as well as spices condiments cooking oil and the fuel that are needed to prepare the meal so the price arrived in thalinomics uh, is in inclusive of all the items that is needed to prepare the thali okay now why is the thalinomics important thalinomics is important because the price of a plate of food has most different the most direct effect on the common man we would get to know uh, through um, thalinomics uh, can understand whether the common man in our country is able to afford a completely cooked uh, indian thali okay thalinomics tell us that food then uh, beverages constitute 45.9% in the consumer price index this is the importance of thalinomics now moving forward let us see how thali price are calculated see the prices of thalis were determined using the consumer price index for industrial workers and this is published by the labor bureau the thali prices were constructed for 25 states and union territories using the average monthly price uh, data from uh, labor bureau next we will see how the affordability factor is calculated and the affordability factor is calculated using the daily wages and that are derived from the annual survey of industries okay having covered all the important points about thalinomics now let us come back to the news article according to the news article there are 24 percentage increase in the thali price that is vegetarian thali price out this of this 24 percent increase 21 is due to increase in tomato price if we take non vegetarian thali the price rise is this is this rise was about 13 percentage this is mainly due to the increase in the price of broiler chicken the uh, report uh, said um, that uh, the prices of vegetarian thali will come down in september due to decrease in tomato price so that's all regarding this discussion uh, we saw what is thalinomics importance of thalinomics and the how the prices of uh, the items used in uh, used are calculated in thalinomics and how uh, how the affordability factor is calculated in dynamics thalinomics okay now with this let us conclude this discussion let us take up the next news article look at this news article yesterday our union minister said that the government has seized nearly 1.2 billion dollars from economic uh, offenders in the past 4 years he also mentioned that it was made possible uh, because of fugitive economic offenders act which was implemented in 2018 so in our discussion today we will see the details of the fugitive economic offenders act let us start with the basics this fugitive economic offenders act was enacted in 2018 it was enacted to seize the properties of economic offenders who have left the country and the provisions of this act are enforced by the enforcement directorate which functions under the ministry of finance now who are classified as fugitive economic offenders 
a person against to whom warrant has been issued for committing an offence listed in the Act is called fugitive economic offender. Here, the value of the offence should be at least rupees a hundred crore, and this applies to two types of individuals: to do those who have left India to avoid criminal prosecution, and those who are refusing to return to India. to face a criminal prosecution here you have to know that the scheduled offenses listed under this act are fraud money laundering counterfeiting uh, government staffs or currencies check dishonor corruption etc for example anirav modi who is a diamond merchant is accused of defrauding the punjab national bank of over 13000 crore uh, he fi- fled uh, india in 2018 is currently living in uk in 2019 he was declared as fugitive economic offender under this act another diamond merchant named um, uh, mizal chowki uh, former ipl chairman lalit modi were also listed as economic um, offender under the section the persons are uh, some of the examples of the fugitive economic offenders who are living outside india right now okay now uh, who declares an individual as an um, economic offender see a special code which was created under the provision of prevention of money laundering uh, act 2002 will declare a person as fugitive economic offender uh, and this uh, court will issue arrest warrant against the offender the appeals against the orders of the special court can be made before the high court the now what happens to the offender the under economic uh, fugitive economic offenders act see the properties of the fugitive economic offenders will be attached and confiscated central government will appoint an administrator to manage and dispose of these properties in addition to this the offender is restricted from filing or dis- def- defending or any criminal claim in india so this is all we need to know about fugitive economic offenders act 2018 now with this let us conclude this discussion take a uh, look at the next news article at the opinion page uh, article is actually con- conversation between two eminent persons since there will be a election in five states at the end of 2023 political parties have been making a number of promises one among the promises is to address the concern of rise price rise of essentials but the question here is to do all these promises provide solution to a systematic problem which is an un uh, non other than jobless growth the article tries to answer this question so in this discussion we will see some of the important points highlighted in this article before getting into the discussion i have highlighted the syllabus regarding this discussion you can go through it now let us stay, uh, start a uh, begin with the promises made by the congress party the congress party is going to use the five uh, promises template in the upcoming assembly election the congress party uh, previously used the strategy in karnataka uh, assembly election uh, five guarantees were firstly uh, provided providing 200 units of free power to all households secondly providing fees uh, rupees uh, 2000 monthly assistance to women head of the every family then providing 10 kg of free rice to every members of bpl households fourth fourthly providing 3000 rupees every month for uh, unemployed graduates finally providing rupees 1500 for unemployed diploma holders both in the age group of 18 to 25 years a free travel for women in public transport buses these are the five promises template of the congress party see even though these promises uh, were um, are pop- populist measures it is intended to connect with the concerns of the common people but the thing is that these promises do not address the larger systematic issues of the unemployment see unemployment in india is a single biggest problem mainly in case of educated youth this does not mean the positive growth rate that is protected for india is fake indian economy actually is growing at a uh, decent rate but at the same time unemployment level in india is also very high that is uh, india is currently facing an era of jobless growth where uh, the economy is able to produce more goods and service without a simultaneous increase in the employment opportunities uh, so uh, so instead of facing on populist uh, measures the government needs to give due attention for the growth of employment okay 
for this to happen we need to uh, keep in mind two important things one is structural transition to overcome the middle income trap and the second one is energy transition that is that will eventually generate huge employment see here the middle income trap refers to a situation where the middle income countries like india is failing to transition to a high income country due to rising cost and declining competitiveness to overcome this middle income trap a country must undergo a certain structural change uh, the change includes expanding and diversifying the export uh, industries creating a culture of innovation by increasing the uh, spending investment in modern infrastructure etc apart from this labor market can be made more flexible and the social safety nets can also be provided to workers they can also be provided with the income security in addition to this to escape the middle income trap support can be provided to msme sector to encourage the entrepreneurship and job creation and in agriculture sector technological interventions can be provided to increase the overall output and in addition to this input can be provided to extract high value added products these are the step, steps uh, that this government can take to escape the middle income trap see the thing is that these structural reforms uh, require a long term commitment and the supportive political environment so government instead instead of putting money in the hands of people through a non productive measures which ultimately results in inflation should fo- focus more on the structural change stages that are uh, mentioned here it is obviously necessary um, to take care of the concerns of the common people through the populist measure but um, providing them employment can be helpful in long term this is the first step that the government can take to address the issue of jobless growth now moving on to the second part see uh, world is currently witnessing a Uh, energy transition that is people are moving from fossil fuel to electrical energy very recently in india we are obsessed with semiconductor manufacturing for uh, example recently a new project was announced with micron in uh, which the government is providing 70% of the project cost actually it is a good news only but the thing is that the semiconductor manufacturing is highly automated so it will uh, also it, it will not generate high amount of job so instead of focusing only on the semiconductor manufacturing government must also give enough focus to the mining of materials that will be used in the semiconductor industries like lithium sodium potassium currently we have mined only 5% of our vast resources so by focusing on on mining of lithium sodium and potassium government can create the local jobs and these jobs will be created in unskilled semi skilled and un- unskilled sector so uh, all sections of the people will get employment by focusing on mining sector this is the second point mentioned in the article to address the issue of jobless growth so by making structural changes to the escape from middle income trap and providing due tra- due attention to the mining of materials like sodium lithium potassium that will be used in the semiconductor industries um, government can achieve both the growth and help generate employment and provide jobs to the people this will help uh, india in the long term that is all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw the issues with the populist measures announced by government and we saw the steps that can be taken to address the issue of jobless growth and now with this let us conclude this discussion move on into the next news article discussion uh, look at this editorial article here recently a historical trilateral summit was held between united states japan and south korea it was held in camp david here uh, camp david is located near washington dc in us as the summit was held in camp david the summit is famously referred to as camp david summit based on the summit only this uh, article here is written see uh, united states japan and south korea are uh, traditional allies uh, so the author um, says that historic camp david summit will further strengthen their strategic relationship also know that india and south korea are now commemorating their uh, 50 years of diplomatic relationship so uh, author says that the camp david summit uh, would provide an opportunity to strengthen the relationship between the india and south korea this is overall essence of this editorial here the editorial speaks about the significance of the camp david summit then how uh, this uh, summit will uh, 
provide opportunity for india and south korea to enhance their relationship and finally it also says that the steps that can be taken to strengthen the india south korea relationship so in our discussion today we will understand all these points in detail before getting into the discussion i have highlighted the syllabus regarding this discussion you can go through it now uh, uh, first let us uh, start with the significance of camp david submit Firstly, the Camp David Summit acted as a forum to resolve the disputes between South Korea and Japan. See, Japan and South Korea have many unresolved historical disputes. Uh, they have a uh, uh, territorial dispute over the islands between uh, South Korea and uh, Japan. Apart from this, both countries have also unresolved trade disputes. Also, so Camp David Summit served as a forum to discuss the unresolved disputes between the Japan and South Korea. Secondly, the Camp David Summit will help the three countries to maintain their strategic uh, presence in Indo-Pacific region. As, uh, as, uh, as uh, we all know, China is continuously working to obtain a strong hold over the Indo-Pacific region. Mm, this uh, has created an indirect dispute between China and uh, United States. See, uh, US has been traditionally dominating the Pacific region, but uh, China's pr- increasing presence in the region has angered the US. So, the Camp David submit uh, held between, uh, held helped the US, Japan, South Korea to send a strong message against China's aggressiveness in the region. Thirdly, the submit helped South Korea to raise a voice against China. See, traditionally, South Korea did not oppose China's aggressive action in Indo-Pacific region. This is because of the trade dependence of South Korea and China. See, around 20% of the total exports of South Korea goes to China. So, if the, if the uh, arises a dispute between China and South Korea, it will affect the economy of South Korea. But now, Camp David Summit has given hope, some hope to the South Korea. So, in future, it will raise its voice against China's aggressiveness actions, aggressive action. This is because if the South Korea gets affected by Chinese action, uh, US and Japan will come to uh, this. Uh, it's, uh, this is the third significance. Fourthly, submit. Uh, may help uh, South Korea to join the Quad grouping. See, South Korea is interested in joining the Quad grouping, which consists of US, India, and Japan and Australia. But South Korea is unsure whether Japan would support this move. This is because, as we already saw, Japan and South Korea have many unresolved disputes, historic dis- issues. Is. But now, uh, after the Camp David submit, the tension between Japan and South Korea are coming down. So, there is a chance that South Korea will become a member of Quad. Uh, and finally, the historical submit will help South Korea achieve the objective of this new foreign policy. See, last year, South Korea introduced a new foreign policy. The uh, objective, main objective of this new foreign policy is to make South Korea a global pivotal, uh, pivotal state. Uh, South Korea also aims to become a significant player in the Pacific region. So, South Korea's engagement with the US and Japan will help it achieve its new foreign policy. These are all the some of the significance of the Camp David Submit. Now, let us see how this Camp David Submit will provide an opportunity to India and South Korea to enhance their relationship. See, uh, South Korea is strategically located in the Pacific region and it is located close to China. Apart from this, South Korea is also ma- a good relation, maintaining a good relationship with the U- US. If we look closer, it resembles India's position, right? India is strategically located in the Indian Ocean region and it is located very close to China and the U- India-US relations are going well. From these points, we can observe that South Korea is like-minded strategic partner of india so the decisions that we are taken uh, decisions we are taken in the camp david submit uh, will yield benefits of south korea as well as india apart from this both the south korea and india are concerned about the rise of china in the indo pacific region so if any actions are taken uh, to counter china based on the outcome of the camp david submit it will not only benefit the south korea it will also benefit the india these facts encourage india and south korea to work together on their common problems this is this in turn would enhance their relationship now finally before ending our discussion we will see the steps that can be taken to strengthen the relationship between india and south korea 
See, India and South Korea established their formal ties in 1973. It has been 15 years since then. So, both the countries are commemorating the 50th year of their relationship. India and South Korea have signed uh, several memos uh, related to trade, defense, education and so on. The relationship between two countries is going well, but still there are some areas where these countries need to focus. This will help strengthen their relationship. Now we will understand the areas where the countries uh, uh, can give additional focus. Firstly, there is not enough engagement between India and South Korea. So these countries need to establish an uh, annual summit at, at the level of foreign ministers. Apart from this, a 2 plus 2 dialogue can also be carried out between these countries. See, the country, India currently has 2 plus 2 dialogue with US, Japan, Australia and Russia. If it is extended to South Korea, it will help in continuous engagement between these two nations. Second area is defense. See, defense, uh, um, South Korea is more willing to address India's defense needs with the ambit, within the ambit of India's Make in India program. So, this willingness of South Korea must be utilized properly by India. For example, India recently developed a self-propelled uh, howitzer ho ho named um, K9 Vajra, uh, the K9, uh, excuse me, the this technology uh, borrowed from South Korea, but it is made in India under Make in India program. So, like this, India should consider developing other military uh, equipments in India with the help of technology from South Korea. This will also uh, strengthen the defenses and the prior uh, submits, uh, prior ties between India and South Korea. Okay, the say third area is nuclear reactor. Nuclear reactor produced in South Korea are efficient and cheap. As we all know, India is shifting towards cleaner energy to meet its climate goals. So, India should make use of these uh, cheaper and efficient nuclear reactors from South Korea to meet its clean energy demands. This will benefit both the countries and enhance their relationship. So, that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion, first we saw the significance of the Camp David Submit. Then we saw how the outcome of the Camp David Submit will help both the, uh, India and South Korea. Then we saw some points about India-South Korea relationship. And finally, we saw three points um, that India and South Korea needs to focus to strengthen their uh, relationship. So, with this, let us conclude this discussion. Take up the next news article. Look at this news article. It is about the outcome of the Asia-India uh, Submit held in Jakarta in Indonesia. Our Prime Minister made a 12 point proposal during this submit the proposal uh, uh, aimed to increase the collaboration between india and asian countries in various areas like connectivity trade digital transformation our prime minister also uh, mentioned to cre create a rule based world order mainly in the post to uh, covid era that said the code of conduct should be established for south china sea in compliance with UN Convention on the Law of Sea. This is all about the submit. So, in this, this in this context, let us see some of the important points about the UN clause. First, let us see uh, uh, when it was created. See, uh, UN clause is an international agreement that came into force in 1994. This convention is a result of third UN Conference on uh, Laws of Seas. This conference takes place between 1973 and 1982. Uh, one class replaced the four treaties of 1958 convention and the high seas. Now let us see the important functions of this first class. One class. One class is uh, like a rule. Uh, UN class. Uh, excuse me. So uh, not un class. UN class. Okay. Uh, UN class is a, like a rule book for the oceans. It tells the countries how they should use and protect the oceans. It covers everything related to sea from fishing and shipping to exploring the resources under the seabed. Basically, it establishes a legal 
framework for all marine and maritime uh, activities apart from this it is also puts up restrictions on the amount of toxins and pollutants that can that come from all ships internationally if the countries have disagreements about the ocean uh, the un- un clause provides a way to peacefully resolve the disputes these are the important functions of un clause now let us see some of the features of the convention firstly it established the international whaling commission uh, the international seabed authority secondly the, this convention has set the limit for various areas in the seas these areas have been measured from a defined baseline as you can see in this picture now let us see some informations about the, these areas first t- let us let us take the internal waters this area covers all the water and waterways on the landward side of the baseline it comprises of salt water area and internal fresh water area such as river and lakes so in this internal waters the coastal states have full sovereignty therefore it is uh, free to set laws and uh, shall also regulate use of any resources a crucial point to note here is that foreign vessels have one no right of passage within the internal waters we can say that the right of innocent passage does not apply in the internal waters see the right of innocent passage here Uh, means any passage that is not harmful for peace or security of the coastal state and such passage should be according to the un clause and other rules of the international law so fishing polluting weapons practice spying by a foreign ship are not considered innocent this is not the intel uh, water now moving on let us look at the territorial seas it is the water from baseline up to uh, 12 nautical miles on the seaward side of the baseline coastal states have full sovereignty uh, so it is free to set laws and regulate the use of any resources also the coastal states have sovereignty over the air space above the territorial sea the seabed and subsoil beneath the territorial sea see also note that here foreign vessels are given the right to innocent passage so okay this is the difference between territorial sea and the internal waters moving on let us take the contagious zone see this is the zone where which is contagious to the the uh, territorial sea it is up to 12 nautical miles from the baseline this means it is beyond 12 nautical miles uh, territorial sea limit up to of 24 nautical miles here a state can continue to enforce laws in our four specific areas the areas being custom taxation immigration and pollu- pollution so it can prevent unpunished violation of laws related to these areas only importantly in the contagious zone the states have jurisdiction only on the ocean's surface and floor it it does not have the right over the air space okay these are all some important classification made by un class that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we covered important points uh, regarding uh, next come to the end of the news article discussion session now let us take up the practice prelims questions four practice questions today let us see them one by one take up uh, look at the first question uh, read the question the term basket sneak sneaking confirm shaming forced action subscription trap are related to which of the following dark patterns discussion uh, it's a uh, here option here is option b dark patterns uh, moving on into the second question the here are three statements about enforcement directorate are given we have to find uh, how many statements given here are correct let us take up the first statement it functions under the ministry of home affairs uh, this statement is incorrect because it comes under the department of revenue uh which is in the ministry of finance moving into the second statement it involved in regulating the financial institutions to prevent the economic crimes uh, this is incorrect because it does not regulate any financial institutions it is done by financial regulators such as rbi say uh, uh, irda etc the enforcement directorate uh, is just involved in investigating the violation of economic crimes so statement 2 is incorrect moving on to the third statement it enforces a fugitive economic offenders act and prevention of money laundering act the statement is correct we saw in this discussion itself so only one statement is correct here option is a uh, so um, moving on into the third question what is the term thalinomics means in the context of economic analysis the correct option here is uh, d 
uh, of food cost and uh, inflation okay moving to the on to the last question here three statements re- regarding one classes u and classes given uh, we uh, we have to find which of the statement are correct to get the first statement india is uh, a state party to this convention the statement is correct india is a part of the un class moving on to the second statement it came into force in the year of 1994 it is also correct we saw in this discussion moving on to the third statement it established the international bailing whaling uh, commission and international seabed authority the statement is also correct since all the statements are correct here the answer is option d 1 2 3 4. okay uh moving on into the main questions regarding today's discussion here displayed here interested aspirants can write in the answers and post them in the comment section if you like the video like comment and share with your friends and for more updates regarding upsc subscribe to uh, upsc ias channel thank you thank you for listening have a nice day